Little by little, the state government is moving to address Queensland's water woes, but it's not easy, especially where the controversial Traveston Dam is concerned. The state opposition has demanded the public be given more time to comment about the dam. It's partly because the government now has documented proof that the measures it says will protect the lungfish are in fact useless and are actually harming up to half of the endangered Mary River turtles. Ironically, the evidence was gathered by the state government's own departments, the EPA and fisheries, and kept under wraps until recently. Karen Berkman reports it seems that when the dam is built, the last natural habitat of two rare species of international significance will be destroyed. This is what dams do to turtles. Washed over the spillway or caught in the turbulent pool below it is like being trapped in a washing machine, tumbling the turtles, badly damaging their shells. These turtles starve to death because the dam killed off the lush underwater vegetation that forms the basis of their diet. And these turtles were caught in a fish lock, designed to help the vulnerable lungfish scale the dam wall. This gives you a good idea of what is happening, is happening to some of the animals in there in the dam and that's uh, at one of the fish locks. Now, you know, if that um, fish lock closes on a turtle and does damage like that, you can imagine what it's going to do to lungfish or other soft-bodied creatures. A report compiled by the Department of Environment and Planning in 2004, but only recently released, shows page after page of serious damage to endangered turtles brought about by fish locks. 40% of turtles near the Ned Churchwood Weir and 50% near the Bucker Weir had shell damage severe enough to stop them breeding for two years. But the report was not considered for the environmental impact study on the Traveston Dam, which recommends the same environmental protection measures. Just because they do the, the reports doesn't mean they're going to be listened to. There's a lot of reports that weren't referred to in the EIS. Including two that show fish locks don't work for the creature they were put in to protect, the lungfish. In 2004, two reports by the Department of Fisheries found that the fish lock does not appear to be providing optimal passage for lungfish at the Ned Churchwood Weir. Only seven passed through it out of more than 1,200 tagged. The fish lock system is believed to be not working any better at the Paradise Dam, but no information has so far been released by the state government. Lungfish expert Jean Joss has warned that dams fragment lungfish populations, reducing opportunities to reproduce. They can put the dam on the Mary River and they will go on living, but they won't be reproducing. The EIS for the Traveston Crossing Dam recommends a new and improved fish lock design, including screening to keep out turtles and untried acoustic barriers to keep them away from the spillway. There's an unresearched, untested, untrialled, mitigation strategy that they're proposing for a turtle that may not even work. It also recommends moving nesting banks and creating artificial ones, which experts say is fanciful. Turtles are known to return to the same site every year. If it's not there, they won't breed. Aquatic animals are harder to manipulate and duplicate the environment. We still don't know what are the ingredients necessary for successful um, survival of the Mary River turtle. And to remove them and put them somewhere else, they may live, but they may not breed and we would not have the prime habitat. At Traveston Crossing, the turtle's prime nesting banks will be 20 metres underwater. An underwater turtle ramp will supposedly allow them to move past the dam wall. Nobody knows if it'll work. The lungfish can't use these fish ladders. Uh, we don't know whether the turtle is going to be happy using this turtle ramp. Uh, why don't we give them some other circus equipment to try and use to survive with? Uh, it, it's just the wrong way to go. In the middle of this year, a Senate inquiry heard 246 submissions about the Traveston Crossing Dam. There was only one in favour. It came from the Queensland Government. What we have, obviously, is the government, in a very belligerent manner, putting forward to the people of South East Queensland that they have the solution to the water crisis of South East Queensland. This is not a solution, this is a problem. Several submissions expressed concern that QWI, the proponent of the dam, would do its own environmental impact study. I feel the state government paid for the environmental impact statement and they got the findings that they wanted. There have been a lot of uh, independent reports commissioned and they have been completely opposite to the EIS. And, you know, I think from the beginning it's, it's been a, a disgraceful campaign of misinformation um, from the government. One of the most interesting submissions to the Senate inquiry came from a group of scientists at the University of Technology, Sydney. 
They conducted a study of Queensland's water needs for the next 30 years and found that Traveston isn't needed. And the conclusions were very clear. That They were very clear that this dam, A, it can't help in the current drought, it's not intended for that purpose, and B, once this drought is over, the dam won't be needed. It's actually a significant waste of, uh, of community money. The Queensland government rejected the finding, saying it was fatally flawed because the figures it was based on were all wrong. It was particularly ironic given that uh, we were at great pains to use only Queensland government figures. What should have been music to Queensland's ears was the report's conclusion that when it comes to water, the rapid growth that's supposed to be part of the problem is really part of the solution. One of the things that South East Queensland ironically has going for it is the very growth uh, which is causing uh, these concerns. The growth means that when you build new houses, when you build new shops, offices and factories, you can actually build in best practice efficiency the first time. And what that means is over time, as the, as the population and housing grows, you will actually become more efficient. The study was done by the Mary Council of Mayors. They say they'll get none of the water and all the economic downside, $360 million in lost economic benefits. A desalination plant with the same water output would be cheaper to build but cost $40 million a year more to run. So for an extra $40 million, the Dubai government could automatically now start spending money on a guaranteed water supply system and they would not have to worry about trying to mitigate 288 separate issues for a proposal on this river. And the costs would be even less if the smart state could borrow an idea from Western Australia and run a desal plant on wind energy. As it stands, the Traveston Crossing Dam won't be finished until 2012 and we'll be drinking our own recycled sewage long before then. A very expensive project, so there's a huge financial risk and when you consider what those public funds could be spent on, uh, that's reason enough to actually uh, have a critical review of this. The federal government has to approve the dam because of the threat to endangered species. But current minister Malcolm Turnbull may lose his seat at the coming election and beleaguered Peter Garrett may lose his portfolio if Labor wins. The Greens believe the deficiencies in the EIS mean they can fight the dam in the federal court. If the federal environment minister, whoever it might be, whether it's Turnbull or whether it's Garrett, makes a decision based on this flawed document, then I think that could be challengeable in court. Scientists cite the tragedy of the Murray-Darling as a warning about what can happen when people rob rivers for human consumption. The Lockyer Burnett Mary region has already been identified by the federal government on a list of 21 regions most affected by salinity and water quality problems. What I'd hate to see is for us to be making the same mistakes in uh, eastern uh, Queensland as have been made in the Murray-Darling and, uh, and future generations uh, having to foot the bill uh, for remedial work in the same way as we're seeing the substantial investment that's required in the Murray-Darling. I think we can do better than that. And we've tried unsuccessfully for more than two weeks to get someone in the Queensland Government to speak to us about the Traveston Crossing Dam. The Government was also unable to provide a scientist to explain the endangered species mitigation measures it says will protect the animals from extinction. The environmental impact statement is open for public debate until December the 3rd. Now onto the federal